I'm back. <laughs> Can you? Okay, this is like some sort of record. This is like four cooking scopes. Ooh, gotta put that back in the washer there. This is like four cooking scopes in one day. Now, come on. <laughs> All right, so my meatballs are still in the oven. They are getting brown. They are almost done. So we'll pull those out so you guys can see the meatballs. If you were on the other scope, um, you saw that I made meatballs. I have made uh, trail mix. I have made chocolate. I have made meatballs. And now I'm on to our lunch meal. Our meatballs are actually for an appetizer for today's, uh, for our dinner guest tonight. And so those will be done and fresh and ready. And they smell amazing. Oh my gosh, they smell, it smells so good in here right now. So now I'm gonna make a super simple one skillet. Not tired at all, <laughs> not tired at all. I love doing this because it makes my week so much easier. So I know, back again. So what I'm gonna make here is, um, I was gonna do rice, but I changed my mind and decided I wanted to do quinoa instead. So I'm gonna make a one skillet um, a one skillet meal that I can eat the entire week. So my whole week's worth of lunch is going to be made in one skillet right now. So what I'm going to put in there is I'm going to make some turkey sausage. So I have about a tablespoon of coconut oil in the pan right now. And I'm going to put a pound of turkey sausage in the, excuse me, a pound of turkey, ground turkey in there. This is the second time I've used ground turkey today. So this is a pound of ground turkey. You want, the turkey will stick very quickly in your skillet, so you wanna make sure you have an oil down in there um, or you're gonna have a problem. So let's turn this just a little bit so you guys can see. Maybe I need to move it back just a little bit as well so you can see a little bit wider there. Um, so to make turkey sausage, really it is all about, um, it's all about the spices that you're using in this. So again, let me introduce myself. If you don't know me, my name is Leslie. I have a website, gotokitchens.com. It is all about healthy cooking. I am a three-year cancer survivor and uh, that's what started my journey. And I am here to teach you guys what I have learned about eating healthy and surviving cancer and uh, just making my life so much better through food, just through the simple practices of food. So, so in this, you're going to add um, about half a teaspoon of garlic salt. I use garlic salt a lot. You guys know that. So this is going to make a turkey sausage. You're going to do a couple of dashes of cayenne pepper. This is going to add the heat to the sausage. I like mine pretty spicy, so I'm going to be just a little bit more liberal than a couple of dashes. I actually like that kick, just a little bit more even. <laughs> I actually like that kick. Um, I'm gonna do some cumin. There is nothing measured here. There's actually a recipe on my website that measures this out. I do not measure it out when I'm doing it on my own. Um, I'm gonna do some fennel seed as well. Now, fennel is what gives it that, that that sausagey taste. Um, fennel is that spice that gives it that sausagey taste. What I like to do is I like to actually crush it in my hands because it's a seed. You can get it ground, but I like to buy it in the seed. I like to crush it in my hand with the side. See how I'm doing in the palm of my hand here with the side of my hand? I like to crush it and have it release its flavor into... Marcy, this scope is not for you. It's more meat. <laughs> actually, you could do it without the meat as well. Um, so a little bit of fennel, and then I'm going to do about two tablespoons, and I'm actually going to measure this out. Not tablespoons, teaspoons, excuse me. Two teaspoons of sage. This is just a dried uh, sage rub. I like it super sagey. Super sagey. <laughs> All right, some salt. This is just regular old sea salt. Smells good. It smells good. And some pepper. And that is what makes turkey, ground turkey, just regular old ground turkey into turkey sausage. Now you can serve this for breakfast. You can serve this for lunch. I actually like it for lunch. And if you have a picky eater on hand, this is a great sausage replacement to their pork sausage that they may be totally addicted to and in love with. Just saying. All right, so we're gonna let that cook up in there and get all nice and ground, and I'm gonna turn up my heat just a little bit. 
smells so good. It smells so good. I'm going to make the same bowl for my husband, except I'm going to use different vegetables. Um, <laughs> did you? It's really good, right? I love the turkey sausage. It's so easy, and it tastes amazing, and you can make little sausage patties. You can. It's a total fake out. I mean, most people don't even know that they're eating turkey. They think that they're just eating some kind of sausage. So, yes, you can make meatballs with it. You can do all kinds of things with it. It's a great, great fake out. You can add Italian spices and make it like an Italian sausage. Very good. Um, so I'll make the same bowl for my husband. I will do another pound of turkey for him, except for him we're going to use different vegetables and we're going to use a different uh, whole grain. For me, I'm going to use uh, quinoa. For him, I'm going to use a basmati rice. So it's you can change. This is very, very interchangeable and it can suit whoever you are making it for. The great thing about this is when I use quinoa is I'm getting extra protein from the quinoa. The vegetables that I have selected, I have actually diced very small. You can see that. They are in a, this is called the brinois actually, this type of cut. Um, but this is, these are the vegetables that I've selected for my lunch this week. There is a red bell pepper, about half a red bell pepper. Um, I'm making my lunch for the week. There is a stalk of celery. There is a carrot and zucchini in there. And this is, this is the vegetables that I've chosen for my lunch this week. And it'll be in there with this turkey sausage. So I'm getting veggie, I'm getting whole grain, and I'm getting a healthy fat from the coconut oil, and I'm getting my protein from my turkey. That, my friends, is a balanced lunch. Super, super balanced. It's gonna fill me up, it's gonna hold me over to dinner, maybe with just one small snack in the middle, and it's gonna fortify me, and I'm gonna have energy all day long. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get past that two o'clock time frame and be like, woohoo, I still feel good. Ready to work, keep going. That two, three o'clock when you're like, <sighs> that is typically a symptom of what you've put in your body for the day. If you wake up in the morning and have a donut, and coffee and then you get to lunch and you have a hamburger and french fries by two or three o'clock you're going to be one to put your head down on your desk if you eat uh if you get up in the morning have a couple boiled eggs with uh maybe even a side salad of tomato and avocado it's a great breakfast by the way if you have that have some hot green tea and then you get to lunch and you have a lunch like this by two or three o'clock you're still going to be full of energy ready to work you're not going to have that fade out time. You guys trust me. I'm a professional. No, I'm totally kidding. You should trust me though because I'm totally right. <laughs> the only reason I'm right is because somebody else taught me. Somebody else taught me how to live like this and how to, how to eat like this. And I saw a huge difference and so it's easy for me to pass it on to you guys. Now I have always loved to cook. And part of what I want to do in the world, it's this is like my goal, my main goal, my main goal with GoTo Kitchens is to get millions of people back in their kitchen making simple, delicious recipes and eating whole real foods. That is my main goal. I'm st let me look at my, my meatballs because they're really almost done. They're super close to being done right now. So you can see all day, I've kind of been multitasking. The meatballs are in the oven. I've cut my vegetables. Now, there, is, there are no dirty dishes in my sink, by the way. Look over here. That is clean dishes. There are no dirty dishes in my sink. I have cleaned between each thing that I've made. So when I'm done, I clean straight away. I clean whatever it was that I was using because then I don't have a pile of dirty dishes to do after I've done my batch cook. And I call this batch cooking because I know that we have ready to eat meals. So we're not thinking about, hey, maybe we should just run out and get lunch because we don't have anything to eat in the house. I know that there's something to eat in the house. I know it's delicious and I know it's nutritious. All right, so my turkey sausage is almost done. I want just a little bit of brown on there. See, easy, easy, smells amazing, amazing. It smells so good. It's killing me. Oh, you guys want to see the meatballs? You want to see the meatballs, don't you? If you were on my previous scope, you'll know that I made some meatballs for an appetizer. These are turkey meatballs. They are so good. I'm going to have to move my camera back, maybe, if I can. Hold on. Sorry for camera shake. Mind the camera shaking. I have to get it out of the way because I got to open my oven. Look at this. This will show you why I use parchment paper as well. Look at those. 
How beautiful are those? You can see the little cheeses have actually browned up on the turkey. So, so good. Ready to eat just like this. Look at the bottom. Cheesy goodness. Amazing. But this is why, this is why I use parchment paper because if you don't, it creates a huge mess. I'm going to put these over here on my butcher block and let those cool. And then we'll take them off and put them on the plate to serve tonight. It's like one of those TV cooking shows. Ooh, you're really far away. Come back. Come back to me. Come back. Come back. Oh, yummy. That sounds amazing. I love stuffed cabbage. I'm going to turn off my... Turn that off. All right, so my turkey is browned up exactly what I wanted to happen. How sneaky am I? Oh, I missed that whole thing. Dang. Can you retype all that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry that I missed that. So now I'm going to take a bowl, and I'm going to transfer all of my turkey into that bowl. And I'm just going to let it sit over on the side. Maybe. Come out, turkey. Come out, come out. This skillet is so heavy that I have a hard time. I have a hard time doing it with one hand. There. Get out. Get out of my skillet. Okay. So now I still have turkey bits in there. This is my, oh, turkey. Lose turkey. Eat it. Oh, that sounds amazing. Good for you. So now, instead of coconut oil, I'm going to put a little olive oil in here. And I'm going to toast up my quinoa. Now, there was a huge discussion this week about soaking quinoa. I do not soak my quinoa. I love it. I love, I love. Thank you so much for saying that. You have made my day. Thank you for saying that. I love it. Thank you. I'm serious. I'm not going to cry, but thank you for saying that. You made my day today. You made everything that I've done this week worthwhile just in that one statement. Thank you so much. Ooh, too hot, too hot. So there was a big to-do this week. i got to stand over here because my shade and my light. I have this big shade above me. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about quinoa right now. So this is one cup of quinoa that I have in here. But everybody was talking about, oh, do you soak your quinoa before you cook it? No, I don't. And the reason I don't is because I cook it like you cook. Somebody said I cook it like you cook risotto. I don't really cook risotto, so I don't know the methods there. But um, but apparently I cook it like you cook risotto. And I toast my quinoa before I boil it. So in my skillet, I'm going to pour my quinoa. I'm sorry, it's off the heat because it just was getting too hot. Uh, there was a little bit of olive oil and some oil left from the turkey bits in there. And I toast it. Now, toasting it means you're just going to run it through. It's actually going to pick up some of the turkey bits. And that's totally cool because it's going to get all mixed together anyway. Let's turn this where you can see this and not so much of me. <coughs> but the olive oil in there, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> pardon me. But the olive oil and the oil from the turkey in there will actually help the quinoa toast a little bit. So you just continuously stir. When the quinoa is nicely toasted, it will actually pop a little bit. You'll see it kind of popping up in the bottom of the skillet. And that's how you know that it's toasted and ready for its liquid. So I'm going to let that sit right there for just a second. This is one cup of quinoa. And I am going to use my, for sake of time, and I'm out of chicken and veggie stock, which is what I'm going to be putting in the crock pot tomorrow morning. I didn't have time this morning. Is I am using an organic, free-range, uh, low-sodium uh, chicken stock. And that's going to be our liquid into the, into the quinoa. And you're going to use two cups of that. But that's after it's toasted. So it's all toasted up. I got tons of spices. Sausage takes lots of spices. Do you see how it's popping up? Can you see that? You probably can't see it. It actually pops up a little bit and it gets a little toasty brown and that's exactly, exactly what I want it to do. I want it to get a little toasty brown. Perfect, right now. So then you are gonna pour your liquid in. Now you need to be careful because your skillet is hot and you're gonna get instant steam, so don't burn yourself. So I go into my spoon along the side of my skillet, not onto my stove, actually it's fine. That steam can burn you, so you wanna be careful. 
So two cups of liquid. I pour it into my spoon to keep it from splattering back up on me. Into my little wooden spoon. So that is, I have now got that in there. So now what I'm gonna do with my quinoa is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna scrape the bottom <laughs> of all the yummy turkey bits. I'm gonna scrape the bottom of the pan and get all those little bits up off the bottom of the pan. This is going to season the quinoa. I do not need anything else. I don't need any salt. I don't need any pepper. I do not need anything like that in here. This is gonna give it a perfect yummy, yummy seasoning. <clears throat> now I'm going to lower the heat just a little bit, just one more temperature, and I'm going to add my veggies. Adding my veggies in, giving it all a nice stir together, making sure that everything is pretty much under the liquid. Do you see how I'm doing that? I'm sorry, I'm probably totally missing comments. I'm paying attention to what I'm doing here. I really want all those veggies out of this bowl. It drives me nuts when I leave veggies behind. Those are, I just feel like I'm missing something. I'm missing the good bits. <laughs> oh, totally Gaga. What? Is that about Lady Gaga? I love Lady Gaga. <laughs> She's an amazing woman. All right, so now I'm gonna put the lid on that. Actually, I, it, I got my heat too low. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit, even though I just turned it down. And that's gonna cook there for about 10, 15 minutes. Once that is cooked, it will, there'll be no liquid left. The quinoa will be cooked. How you know quinoa is actually cooked is because it will look like a fish eye. I'm sorry, it's what it looks like. <laughs> it's, it's what it looks like. So it's gonna have a nice translucent edge and it's gonna have a little seed center. And that's how you know that quinoa is ready to eat. So you could actually just eat quinoa just like it is. I've actually made quinoa flour just from quinoa, sticking it in my blender. Actually, I use a coffee grinder for it. It blends it up nicely. When I want a little flour for a roux, um, it's actually <laughs> it's actually an amazing way to make a roux is, is to grind up quinoa and use that instead of whole wheat flour super simple to do as well but that's how you know so when that is ready and when that is cooked um, I it, it I'll know because it'll look like a fish eye I, <laughs> I know it's gross it is a sub for rice and it's a for me it's a better sub for rice because rice is definitely a whole grain uh, you probably want to stay away from white rice because they have bleached it so you want it in its most natural state which would be a brown organic rice that's all I buy is brown organic rice or brown basmati rice um, <clears throat> and um, and then the quinoa is a whole grain, but it's a whole grain with other um, uh, nutrients in it and some protein in it as well. So if you just wanted to do this vegetarian style, you could totally skip this, this turkey sausage and still get some protein from the plants and from the quinoa in there. So yes, for me, it's better. <clears throat> I'd like for you to, you don't have to identify to me here, but um, I would like for you to identify to yourself why you are going on a low carb diet. Um, again, you don't have to do that. I, this is just for you, just for you to do some soul searching inside about why you want to go onto a low carb diet. Um, because I think that a lot of people kind of go overboard missing carbs. They start deleting fruits and they start deleting some veggies because they have too many carbs and I just I, I'm really nervous when people say that they go that they're going on a low carb diet so just make sure that you are identifying make sure you've educated yourself which I'm not saying you haven't but just educate yourself before you try any of those types of diets so I try to get people to adhere to a real food don't count calories don't count fat don't count uh, ounces don't count carbs don't do any of that if you're eating whole real foods then you don't need to worry about how many carbs that you're eating um, and you don't need to worry about <clears throat> excuse me you don't need to worry about uh, how many calories that you're intaking okay yeah 
Yeah, yeah, good, good. Yeah, I agree. Totally not. And that's what that's exactly what I'm talking about is when you're eating real foods, um, then carbs and things like that aren't a concern anyway. So anything, even if you're using rice, um, if you're using a brown rice and you know you're chewing it properly, then I wouldn't be too nervous about that. Now, maybe not eating it every single day, um, because some people go overboard, especially if they're trying to go vegetarian, <laughs> they eat rice with every single meal because they're trying to um Good. That is a good goal. I like that goal. <laughs> you hate calorie counting? I know. Calorie counting stinks. That's what I used to do um, pre-cancer is I actually had my fitness pal on my phone and I counted every calorie that went in my mouth. And I thought because I was thin, I haven't always been thin, by the way. I've weighed 200 and almost over 200 pounds at one point in my life, in my 20s. Um, but because I thought I was thin and in shape, I thought I was healthy, but really I was not. I was eating poorly, and I didn't even realize it. I thought I was eating pretty healthy, and I was not at all eating healthy. And so once I understood what a real food healthy diet was, I was like, holy crap, I've really been missing the boat. And so that's when I started educating myself. And this has been a three-year process. So the student, after three years, actually about after two and a half years, the student was ready to teach. And so, um, so yeah, and it's my next step in learning is to actually teach you guys because then I learn, um, then I learn along the way as well. Sorry, sorry, I have a bad connection. Robin is actually watching some uh, surfing. He's he's live streaming some surfing uh, in the other room, so it doesn't surprise me that my connection is not good today. So, and I didn't want to use my cell phone. Uh, for this so you see how I got a little bit of a boil in there that is absolutely perfect that is exactly what I want to do I want that I want that liquid to simmer out and cook everything as we go along so probably shouldn't be removing that lid a whole lot <laughs> when you're cooking quinoa uh, because you want that steam to actually form and cook the quinoa that's what makes it nice and tender and keeps it from being sticky icky so and being hard and weird like quinoa can be weird very easily and so yes but I found when I cook it this way it's kind of it's kind of idiot proof uh, for me because I can really screw up these kinds of meals um, but this one is actually when I cook it this way it actually makes it very 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 easy so I'll make Robin a rice bowl he will have brown butter basmati rice same method by the way he will have brown basmati rice um, <laughs> good good I, that's awesome I love that you're doing that that is a great goal I, I'm glad that you've identified it there are so many people that just say I'm going low carb and they don't even know why or what that even means so yes cutting white breads and white flours out of your diet and refined sugars is amazing good for you um, please watch my scopes because none of my scopes will have any of those things in them <laughs> so when I'm cooking I'm cooking whole real foods and those are the things that you should be eating so yes um, so yes so I will make this for Robin he actually likes broccoli carrots and cauliflower in his um, and and rice and the turkey and I don't make him turkey sausage I just make him plain ground turkey with a little S&P yeah, I'm sorry. Somebody else said that I had a bad connection. I, that doesn't surprise me. Um, we're streaming multiple things here in the house right now, so that doesn't surprise me. I'm sorry. You'll have to watch the replay. It'll be all grainy and weird, too, but you have to watch the replay. <laughs> So, so there you go. This will be ready when this is all cooked up. Um, I'm trying to stall here so you guys can actually see what it looks like when it's all cooked up. Um, so forgive me for stalling. We're getting really close. Um, I want to put it all together so you can see what the bowl looks like. And this is what I will have all week for lunch. And it's an amazing lunch. It's well balanced. Um, it is energy giving. It is life giving. It is good for my cellular structure in my body. Um, and it, it's, you know, it has some cancer fighting properties in it, which is what you want. So, yes. Does anybody have any questions? Can I answer any questions for you? Um, my turkey meatballs are looking pretty good as they're setting up. Hey, Jen, it's good to see you. Look at this. They have this little crust on them. Look, look at the bottom. <laughs> oh, these are so good. Yes, they are. I'm going to take a bite. Oh, cheesy goodness. The turkey meatballs, go watch the replay. I just made these on another. These are an appetizer. These are not something that you eat for dinner. 
<laughs> these are an appetizer. You put these out for people to have little bite-sized snacks before dinner. They are so good. So good. But there is a scope on those. You can go watch it. Yeah, I know. It's bad. Robin is streaming surfing. Sorry. Talk with my mouthful. Robin is watching big wave surfing. There are waves on the, on the north shore of Maui right now that are 30 to 50 foot high. <laughs> and there are surfers on them. And that's what he's watching. So he's streaming that and I'm streaming this. And we don't have enough bandwidth for all that. So, sorry. Connection is bad. But I'm going to wait. Even though I know the connection's bad, I'm still going to wait because I want to show you guys the finished product. So, And it's getting there very quickly. <laughs> so I'm just going to stand here and do nothing. And yeah, and wait for this to be done. <laughs> Cindy, my connection's bad. Don't stay. <laughs> is everybody having a bad time or is it just a few of you? <laughs> I don't see any hearts or comments or anything. I see you guys coming and going and that's about it. So sorry. Thank you for all the replay viewers that are putting up with my crappy connections. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. Oh, so good. I am going to give it a little bit of a stir just to make sure everybody's getting scrumbled up in there beautifully well. I'm going to be so happy at lunchtime every day this week. I'm going to be happy. Happy, happy. This will feed me for the entire week, by the way. So good. <laughs> it's worked away. I know. Sorry. It's like, you want me to tap dance or something? I don't know how to tap dance. Sorry. That was total fail on tap dancing. <laughs> so oh, let me, I can talk about what's going on this week. So coming up this week, noon mountain time, lunch with Leslie, we are talking about the top five cancer busting foods. We are not even going to talk about foods that you can't eat. We're going to talk about foods only that you should be eating. If you are trying to one bust cancer out of your life or two, never want to get cancer in the first place. My goal is that you guys never get cancer in the first place. I was just, Casey, if she's still here, said that her mom actually, um, okay, good, good, um, said that her mom actually uh, healed her breast cancer and shrunk her tumor, her breast tumor, with her diet. Love it, love it, love it. I was more chicken than that. I actually had mine removed. I had a, actually, if I ever had breast cancer again, which I know I won't because I know that I won't, but if I ever did, I would not have the tumor removed either. I would fight it with food. So, but I know that my body is like fortified and people are like, oh, you better knock on some wood saying stuff like that. I don't even need to knock on wood because I have... I, I take care of myself. I make sure that my body is doing what it's supposed to do. So I know those cancer cells do not have a fighting chance in my body. So not even worried about it, not even paranoid about it. Used to be worried about it. The first year after cancer, I was freaked out. I was constantly, every ache and pain, I was like, oh my God, I think I have cancer again. What if I have cancer again? And now I'm like, Shh, whatever, I hurt my shoulder <laughs> surfing. That's the problem with my shoulder. So yes, it's... Uh, one of the biggest things with cancer is the fear that comes along with it. You get mighty fearful about everything. So it makes you a hypochondriac, which I have never been in my entire life. But now that I know that I am fortifying and eating whole real foods and good foods, no worries. No worries. So this is kind of a little bit, it's not a stir fry, but it has that idea. And, and I eat it in a bowl, so I just get a big giant bowl of it every single day and eat it. And um, yeah, and it's amazing. So you could even put like a little feta or you just S&P in some butter. A lot of people like this sort of thing with butter on it. Uh, and that would be great because you'd be getting a great fat. You could put some avocado slices on top. One of my favorite things to go with things like this is an avocado tomato salad. So just avocados and tomatoes. If you wanted to throw some spinach in there, that's fine. Um, but avocados and tomatoes make an amazing salad, just all chopped up together, maybe with a little lemon and a little basil even on top of that. Uh, or some oregano if you like different flavors. Or or cilantro would be fine too. But just mixing that all up together and serving this on the side of this, perfect, perfect lunch. And you could eat that sort of stuff all day long, all day long. Ain't nothing bad in here for you. All right, so all my liquid is out. 
Let me see if I can show you the fish eyes. This is not going to be easy. I don't think that you're going to be able to see it, but let's see if you can. So the fish eye in, oh, it's dripping everywhere. <gasps> Hot. No, my camera, let's see. No, my camera won't adjust. You can kind of see it, but there's just a little bit of translucent around the quinoa with a little bit of, um, I'm gonna turn off my heat now. There's a little bit of translucent with just a little bit of a seed center, and that's what you're looking for. So now I can add my turkey sausage back into this. Yummy. I want to eat it right now. Mix it all up. And I have a giant, and I do mean a giant, container of food for the entire week. Now, you could do a family dinner with this easily, 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 easily. You're feeding them something that is real and is whole foods, and everybody likes to eat in a bowl. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, everybody likes to eat things in a bowl. When you eat things in a bowl, like it's a perfect, like somebody called it a TV bowl um, this week. I was talking about this particular recipe, and, so, and it made me want to make it, so I made it. Um, but somebody was talking about it, and they were like, oh, it's like a TV bowl. And I was like, exactly. Although I do encourage you to eat around the table um, and not in front of a TV or an electronic. But, um, but yes, it would be great for that TV bowl, maybe. All right, let me have a bite. Because it looks so yummy. It looks like it deserves a bite. It's hot though. It's hot, 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 hot. I do. I have a website, go to kitchens.com. There are tons of recipes over there. There are tons of blog posts. There are tons of healthy eating tips. There are tons. You can read all about me. You can read all about my cancer journey. I am on YouTube as well. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Catch.me. Spell with a K. Catch.me, if you're not familiar with Catch.me, um, then you should go check that out. You can see all my replays of all my scopes, although my scopes tend to get kind of long sometimes. So, all right. So, appetizer, done. Chocolate, done. Trail mix, done. Lunch, done. I have one more lunch to make, and then by that time, it'll be time to make dinner for my guests, so... Yes, a lot of people are going through cancer treatment. I'm sorry that he had to do that. Hopefully you can help him stay on track with Whole Real Foods because it is not too late. A lot of people think, oh, well, I've already had chemo and I've already had radiation and I've already taken the meds and blah, blah, blah. It is still totally great to stay on track with healthy meals. So, yeah, so just drilling that in there. In fact, it's going mainstream. If you ever watch a Cancer Treatment Center of America commercial, awesome. I love that. I love it. Love it. Love it. Good for you. Good for you learning from that. Um, but if you ever watch a cancer treatment of a Center of America commercials, um, they're starting to talk about having a medical doctor and a holistic doctor and you get a nutritionist and they're all going to help you get better from cancer. And I'm like, yeah, duh. <laughs> Just, you know, it's cool. It's great that it's going mainstream. I couldn't ask for anything better than for this sort of this sort of practices to go mainstream. It's my dream for all of this to go mainstream. It is my desire for this kind of treatment of the body to go mainstream. So there you go. All right, I have one more lunch to make and I need to make that and then I need to get on to dinner with my friends. You guys have an amazing evening. I will be here tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday. I will be here tomorrow. We are going to talk about the top five cancer busting foods all week this week. And if you're not familiar with me, um, I break it down. We don't just talk about it. We talk about it all week long. And you guys are going to know everything that I know about, um, about these types of foods. So please join me noon mountain time. You can catch the replays on catch.me slash go to kitchens g o the number two kitchens.com that's also the website and you can find me on all social media at go to kitchens.com please <laughs> thank you so much thank you Lauren that's very sweet um yeah you're welcome you guys have an amazing evening go out and do something fun go watch a movie go take a walk do something great tonight uh it's it's Sunday night and something fun should be happening I'm gonna have dinner with my friends and I can't wait so I'll see you guys tomorrow noon mountain time love ya see you